Hey everyone, in this video we are going to compare the animal cell with the plant cell to see their similarities and differences. But before we come to that, please subscribe to the channel. It is for free. With a monthly subscription, you can also become a member of this channel now. As a member, you are mentioned at the end of a video and you have access to cool emojis. But please, only use this form of support if you have enough money to spend. Both cells, the plant and the animal cell, possess a plasma membrane, also often referred to as cell membrane. This structure surrounds the cell itself and separates the inside of the cell from the outside environment. The plasma membrane is a phospholipid bilayer that is selectively permeable. Depending on polarity and size, certain molecules can pass through and others cannot. Floating within the phospholipid bilayer are ion and protein transport channels. One of the main functions of the plasma membrane is the regulation of nutrient and mineral transport. But the cell membrane also plays an important role in cell signaling and allows the cell to interact with the outside environment. The plant cell has an additional layer outside. The cell wall is an exclusive feature of plants. Animal cells do not possess this structure. A random fun fact, fungi cells do also have a cell wall. The plant cell wall is composed of cellulose embedded in a net with other complex polysaccharides and proteins. The plant cell wall is a strong structure that needs to be sufficient to withstand the high osmotic pressure that is present inside the cell. Inside the plasma membrane lies the cytoplasm. Cytoplasm is described as the totality of cytosol, a liquid containing the nutrients, the cytoskeleton and the organelles of a cell. Among these, the nucleus might be one of the most well-known cell compartments that is present in both the plant and the animal cell. The nucleus functions as the control center of the eukaryotic cell. It stores the majority of the genetic information in form of DNA that is often organized in chromosomes, which effectively allows to store a rather long sequence of genetic information inside the nucleus. Within the nucleus, important processes take place. Replication to duplicate DNA and transcription to generate RNA. There is another structure located inside the nucleus. The nucleolus is made of proteins, RNA and DNA. The nucleolus function is the production and assembly of the ribosomes. Ribosomes are also present in both cell types. Ribosomes have the function of translating mRNA into proteins. The membrane of the nucleus is connected to a membrane of another cell organelle. The so-called endoplasmatic reticulum, abbreviated with ER, is also found in animal and plant cells. There are two types of ER. The rough ER that has a granular structure because it is partly coated with ribosomes and there is the smooth ER. At the rough ER, protein synthesis but also protein modification and preparation for their transport take place. At the smooth ER, a main function is the synthesis of lipids and in some cell types also steroid hormone synthesis. The newly synthesized or modified proteins need to be transported to their point of destination. This is one of many functions that is overtaken by the Golgi apparatus, also present in the animal and the plant cell. Here, proteins that come from the rough ER are taken up. The proteins are sorted, packaged and sent to their respective location. Further modifications such as glycosylation take place at the Golgi. In addition to that, the plant cell wall also relies on the Golgi as polysaccharides are synthesized here. The secret of a leaf's green color lies in chlorophyll. This is found in an organelle named chloroplasts, which is exclusively found in the plant cell. Photosynthesis is a feature that makes plant cells so special. The magic happens inside the chloroplasts. With enough sunlight, Water and carbon dioxide are used to produce energy in form of simple sugars. Indirectly, oxygen is produced as a byproduct. What an essential byproduct! Some plant cells also possess a different type of plastid. The amyloplast is responsible for the storage of starch, an important polysaccharide for plant cells. 
In contrast to plastids, mitochondria are found in both cell types. Mitochondria, as the powerhouse of the cell, provide the energy needed to power the cell's biochemical reactions. Peroxisomes are organelles that can accumulate and degrade peroxides, which are reactive oxygen species that can cause damage to other cell compartments. Hydrogen peroxide, for example, is an unavoidable byproduct of some biochemical reactions. Plant cells have a gigantic permanent vacuole that can take up to 90% of the total cell volume in plants. Although some types of animal cells may also possess a small vacuole organelle, this is nothing compared to the one of a plant cell. The vacuole has a whole bunch of different functions. In plant cells it maintains the internal pressure, called turgor, and thus contributes to the cell's total stability. It is also often seen as a large trash can that can digest waste inside the cell. In contrast to plant cells, where waste disposal is primarily covered by the vacuole, animal cells possess different organelles. Lysosomes break down and digest macromolecules in the animal cell. Further, lysosomes are part of the endomembrane system, which works well together to package, modify and transport proteins or lipids. Last but not least, we should also mention the cytoskeleton. In plants, the cytoskeleton is mainly composed of microtubules and actin filaments. In animals there are microtubules, actin filaments and also intermediate filaments. The cytoskeleton contributes to the cell's shape and to the organization and movement of the organelles inside. The animal cell possesses another very special structure, the centrosome. The centrosome can be seen as the production side of microtubules. This organelle supports the structure of the cell and fulfills essential organizational functions during cell division in animal cells. As you can see, plant cells and animal cells share a lot of similarities. But these types of eukaryotic cells also do have exclusive organelles. If you are curious how a prokaryotic cell is structured, you may check out this video here. Please like the video if it was helpful to you and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Special thanks to Sophie and have a good one.